This is code.org. Let's see what we're doing. Sorter. Write method square list to return a new 1D array containing the squares of each value in data. Write the method sort list to sort an array from the smallest to the largest value using either a selection sort, insertion sort, or a merge sort. All right, so first task here, I guess, is going to be squaring the data. So, and then we need to return an integer array after doing so. So what I might do then is we're going to loop through our data. So for int i for index is equal to zero. i is going to be less than data dot length i plus plus. Bam. And then we need to uh, contain this square. We need to square each element or each uh, value in data. So I'm going to head over to our handy dandy documentation and Java math. Right, so I need a way to square things. And if I go through here, this is square root opposite of what we need. Power. This is looking promising. Yes. All right. So math dot uh, math power p o w I guess a comma b, where a is the base and b is the exponent. What we want to be squaring or well the exponent. All right. So with that said, I'm going to go ahead and do math.pow, just like they have there. And then what do I want? I want data, whatever index I'm at, and I need to get the square of it. So I need to put it to the second power. A few things to keep in mind, though. Notice this is a double. We don't have a double. We have ints. So let's go ahead and do... I'm going to actually just take data i and set it now equal to whatever this returns. Let me see. I'm going to hit run and see if it alerts me to an error already. Oh, I don't return here. That will be an error. Yeah. Yes. And so this is going to be an issue. We can't just suddenly convert a int to a double. However, and we've done this before, we cast it using int. If we put int in front of it, that will cast this or force the result into being an integer, and so that should be acceptable. Boom. Okay, so we have it being squared now. Did they already do that? No. Okay, so we are successfully squaring it now. Um, let me go ahead and actually call that. So first set, and then let me go ahead and print it. I'm just going to copy and paste. Oop, typo. Great, so that is working. I might even do a first set down here so I can still keep track of it. I might even move these around after words. But regardless, that one is working. So now that we are successfully squaring it, we need to get to sorting. Guys, don't reinvent the wheel. Use your resources for this. So we can do an insertion sort or a merge sort. And thankfully, I'm just going to head back to the main part of this lesson. And boop. And hey, they gave me an example I know of a selection and an insertion sort. So I'll focus on those. I'm in the first part of this lesson. Sorter. Hey, look, here's a method. Selection sort. And I'm going to talk about it some, but please use your resources. They provide them to you. Sort list. So I'm actually going to paste this whole thing here. And now let me go grab the other. This is some info, sorter, insertion sort. And control V, paste. Okay, so how do these work? Let's do a quick overview. Here is insertion sort. So the distinction between insertion sort and selection sort is that for a, well, here I can work left to right, compare each item to all the items on its left insert the item into the correct position. So I start with one, nothing's to one's left. I then move on to seven. Is one less than seven? Yes, so we're good to go. I then move on to six. Is six less than seven? Yes, so I need to relocate it. So I put six here. Three is less than seven and three. So three ends up here. That would be the selection sort. We're looking at values on the left side and moving our number accordingly. A, a walk. This is an insertion sort, what I just explained, yikes, because we are moving it, right? We're inserting three way down here. 
a selection sort, you are selecting the smallest element, right? You're not just iterating through each one. You're selecting the smallest element from an array and placing it at the beginning of the unsorted section. So here I'm at three, I take a look at one, one is less, I then look at eight, five, seven, one is still the smallest, so now one is in the sorted section, three is the smallest, three is in the sorted section. I'm now on eight, I look at five and seven, five was the smallest, so now five is in the sorted section. All right, that's both selection sort and insertion sort. It's somewhat else to us. I'm gonna clean these up though. All right, so for our selection sort, you can see what's going on here. We have our index, because we're gonna loop through each portion of data. We keep track of that index by assigning it to current, and then we loop through all of the data on the, on the right side of our current, right? So we loop through all of these numbers, seeking out a smaller number. If we find that smaller number, we save that index to current. So whatever the smallest number we found, that goes into our current value. So for instance, let's say, uh, let's say right here, let's say five was at the end actually. So if five was over there, we would start with eight and that would be our current value. Eight would be the smallest. So our current index would then be two. But then we're gonna take a look at seven. I'm pretending seven is here and five is here. Yikes. And then we're going to take a look at seven. Seven is smaller than eight. So this would be our current index. Index three, right? However, then we go over here. Five is smaller than that. So now our current index is index four, and that ends up being the smallest. And that's what they're doing here, right? So we're assigning current to, to whatever index we just found that has a smaller value. And then at the end, once we loop through all of these data points, once we loop through all of these items, we then say, all right, we need to store this value. So we use temp. Temp is going to be data.current because we're about to write over whatever is in the current spot. Data.current, which used to be the smallest value, is now whatever data we started on. So whatever value we started on, we're going to move that into the spot, right? So just like we do here, say five is the smallest, we now flip flop these. We move eight over and we replace eight with five. That is what is occurring here. Insertion sort, let's hit upon this too. That's another one of our options. Insertion sort, let me clean it up. All right, so similar to what I already explained, we're looping through the entire thing. We now use a while loop because we're comparing it to data towards the left. As long as we're greater than zero, we continue to loop. And data.next is greater than our current value because I know as long as the data next to me is larger, I need to keep moving through to find the new position to insert my current number. So now it's up to me. I have these both as options. I am going to, I could run them in here just by doing this, of course. Uh, selection sort data. Instead, though, I'll go ahead and just whoop, take that whole method in for this and implement that should do that good and good all right and so let's give this a shot bam squared and sorted so i'm gonna go ahead and do this we didn't actually need that i just liked having it to distinguish them doing a lot of copying and pasting to get this set up right cool let's check it's out Boom, and yep, perfect. And again, guys, use your resources, but either of those would work, or you could be fancy and do a merge sort, regardless. Uh, cool, onward.